Yo, yo, welcome back. Now yesterday I told you I wasn't going to build a game using Fortnite Editor for Unreal. And what I really meant to say is I'm not going to build my own, like, I don't think that I'm going to get into that in the beta right now. I'm going to wait until they add in the new features. One of, the, one of my new subscribers in the comments actually told me to go watch this video, which was really enlightening. Which, uh, this dude interviewed the 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 owner of epic games and they said a lot more is coming to unreal engine for fortnite so that kind of got me excited so i want to keep on learning more in here but uh like yesterday i said you could build the game of your dreams with the stuff that they already have in here and this is going to take minimal verse coding so what we're going to do is run through some of these examples that they've set up for us and let's build some games the the best way to become a game developer is to build games literally it doesn't matter if it's a, sh a crappy game or a great game just build games the more games you build the better you'll be so open up your unreal um editor for fortnite and let's start um with these island templates and let's get a blank one right here and you can call it whatever but i think we're going to make a capture the flag and I'm gonna call mine capture the flag because just so I'll know what it is now once you've created that you'll go into your level here and what we have to do is we're gonna set some options so these options pretty much are gonna control the whole game and the way that we get to these options is we come over here in our outliner which this part of the engine is called the outliner and what's here is it shows you everything that's in your scene already so, you know, it's saying grid plane because it's grid plane right there. Grid plane is the floor. Um, but let's find one that says island settings here. And in the island settings, uh, let's go to user options and then game rules. So under here, there should be user options and then game rules. And what we need to do is we need to go through a lot of these game rules and set them to what we need them to be. So in order to find them faster you can come up to this search bar and search for what you need so the first thing that we're going to set is let's talk about all of these too while we set them so type in max players and this one is set on 16 let's set our max players to 24 so we can have 12 on 12 teams all right the next one we need to look for is teams so just type in teams and here it goes free for all we want it to be split evenly right here team size I'm sorry split evenly perfect uh, default class identifier we want this to be the class slot and we want it to be number one now okay let me tell you what some of these d does so the teams identifier the one we just set um, is going to split the, or the team size is going to split the teams evenly. So it can only be 12 versus 12. If a new player joins, they'll be, you know, whatever team needs them. That's where they'll go to. Um, on the default class identifier right here, basically it's saying that this is the class that's assigned to players when they join. And we'll talk about those classes, I guess, a little bit later in this tutorial. Uh, let's do the next one which is time limit and here we need to click this on and this is set at five minutes let's go ahead and set it to an hour so 60 minutes the next one we need to do is score to end and let's actually turn this on and for them to end the game they need to score at least three points okay let's do another one join in progress and for this one, we want spawn. And it's already on spawn, so we're good there. Respawn type. Join in progress. Basically, what that's going to do is, like, if anybody wants to join your game, then they'll be able to just spawn in. Um, respawn type. Respawn type. Um, we're going to set this one as a wave. And instead of individual wave. And what that does is says... Uh, Wave means that when all the eliminated players uh, within a certain period, all those eliminated players will spawn back in a group, basically. So that's kind of what the respawn wave does. All right, the next one is 
auto start and we've got it on let's set it to 60 this will allow the game to start in 60 seconds all right next one is game slot I mean game start countdown and you guys know what this is this is like when the game starts it's the countdown timer before the game actually starts I'm gonna set mine at five seconds allow spectating on other team we want this to be false because we don't want them to be able to look at the other team when they die only look at their own team infinite resources let's turn that off we don't want them to have infinite resources we don't even want them to have resources in this game we don't need resources this is capture the flag uh, maximum building resources so that could be at zero this is 500 let's put it at zero because they don't need it again allow building that's the next setting and what do you think we're gonna set that at of course we're not gonna allow them to build anything so we can turn it to none all right build a uh, building can destroy environment no see it's click true but we need to click it to false all right environment damage the ones that I'm not explaining I feel like the the title explains them all um, so I'm sorry if, if I'm skipping over some you're like what does that mean <laughs> I felt like the the title kind of explained it but uh, let's talk about environment damage this basically means you can attack the environment so we don't want that on we want that off structure damage meaning that the structures around you can take damage uh, structure damage and we want that also off because we don't want any structures to take damage this is we're not building fortnite we're building capture the flag in fortnite uh what else do we want weapon here it goes weapon destruction percentage so this is how much percent your weapon is going to do to the environment and stuff like that and again we don't want any kind of we don't want anything to happen to the environment we just want to play capture the flag so set it to zero the next is pickaxe destruction so I guess you guys can understand what that is and we're going to turn that to zero or it's actually on none so cool pickaxe destruction none because we don't want the pickaxe to be able to destroy things um, but the pickaxe range multiplier we can set it at four even though we're not gonna have a pickaxe in the game what this does is it allows further range for the the pickaxe to do damage um, start with pickaxe false perfect down but not out this is a cool one down but not out and what this is is when you shoot a player in Fortnite they get down and they start crawling on their knees and that's what this is and we don't want that in our game because they can respawn pretty quickly so we don't necessarily need them to be crawling around uh, eliminated player items There you go. And so this is when you kill a player in Fortnite, they usually drop all their items. But this time, we're just going to delete all their items when they die. So we'll just change it to delete. Um, allow item drops. So this is, again, when you can drop an item. In Fortnite, you can drop your items, and they'll just stay on the map, and other people can, can come pick them up. In this case, we're going to set up different classes for different types of characters. So we're not going to have that feature in this. Uh, another one we need to look for is fall damage. Now fall damage, we do want this to be on. And fall damage, if you played video games, that's if you fall from a high point, then you get damage. Um, glider ready play. We do not want this on. Because all this is is saying that you can um, freely deploy your glider without the use of any special item so basically in Fortnite if you jump 
then you can press X to make your glider come back out, like if you're at a high spot. But we don't want that in this game, so we're going to leave it false. Also, what we're going to leave false is player flight. Because we don't want them to be able to fly. The next thing that we need to do is show the wood resources. Let's set that. Show wood. All right, we don't want any resources in this game. So let's turn all of these off. So show wood resource count off. Show a stone resource count. We could turn that off. Show metal resource count, turn that off. Show gold resource count, make sure that all of that is false. And now what you wanna do is file, save all. Now, one quick thing I wanna talk about before we move on is the save all. It is very good practice to go to file, save all right now. Because in my experience, when I click this save button, it like, it bugs out and it freezes. And that's not at all what I want. It makes working in the engine a little bit harder. So make sure you just press file, save all. There's never been an issue when I've been using that one. Cool. So now we've got our island settings, like the game settings all set up. The next part of this is we have to build a map. And I'm gonna make a whole nother video about that because we're gonna have to play with a lot of the uh, Fortnite stuff that's already in here. So now that we got our settings set up, uh, I won't I won't make you guys wait too long for this map video uh, because we're gonna get this example rolling and probably be done within the next couple of days here. Um, so thanks for joining me on this one. I hope you guys got your settings set up and I hope you're ready to start building this map, baby. Let's go. I'll holla at y'all next time. Peace.